Axis and today is 28th March Monday and we are here with the Hindu analysis of 28th March. So if I am audible and visible just write in the comments yes sir you are audible so that we can start our session. Agar meri awaz aari aap ek bar likh do comment section mein yes sir you are audible. Uh, so uh, in today's the Hindu uh, newspaper on the first page this is the most important article. Uh, um, others are actually political article. Rajasthan vote are moved on Congress side. This is a political one. This is also a political article. So I have suggested you always yes, if sir. it is pure uh, political article then try to skip those articles. Uh, this one is slightly important uh, because it is not only political but uh, for other point of view also. Uh, this can be asked in exam or questions associated with that can be in the exam. Amritpal elusive police arrest 34 more followers. I hope you all are aware of Amritpal Singh. Uh, very much in the news recently from Punjab. I hope you all are aware and police uh, actually he is on the run and police is trying its best to arrest him. And that is why it was in the news. Mobile internet also got suspended in those regions of Punjab and all. Right. I hope you all are aware of that. Okay. Now since we are talking about Amrit Pal Singh, there is a question. Uh, Amrit Pal Singh is the chief of what? Your options are Khal Saeed, Sikh for Justice, Waris De Punjab, none of the above. Your time starts now. Everyone, please press the like button, guys. Yes, Amrit Pal Singh is the chief of what? Uh, which of the following organization? So, the right answer to this question, I'm waiting for the answers. Yes, the right answer is option C. Var is the Punjab Day is the right answer. Yes, Priya Chavan is right. Good. So, C is the right answer to this question. Just have an idea. Uh, option B, this is a banned organization in India. Sick for justice is banned, but uh, I think Hal Said is not banned. I mean, this one is banned. So the right answer here, uh, Amrit Pal Singh is the chief of Waris Punjab Day. So C is the right answer to this question. So you can see it here, pro Khalistan preacher Amrit Pal Singh with multiple teams raiding several locations, uh, means police is searching for him and all two fresh cases were registered against the preacher and all. And he is actually from the Waris Punjab Day. So just have an idea, WPD also they write it in short. So just have an idea about it. Uh, he is from 45 km from Amritsar. So near somewhere around 45-50 uh, km from Amritsar, uh, the police is actually uh, searching, I mean, in his residence and all. Okay, so just have an idea. So C is the right answer, yes. Namra, Afta, Priya, Chavan, Vishal, Raj, Ronyar, Sanya, Ansari, Vishal, you are right. C is the right answer. Now since we are talking about this, a very, very, very important actually historical event uh, is, uh, related to the Khalistan movement and all. So this is a question for you. Dash was an Indian armed force operation from 1st to 10th June to remove uh, the leader Jarnail Singh Bhindrawal and his followers from the uh, Golden Temple, the holiest site of Sikhism in Amritsar, Punjab. So what is the name of that operation? Your options are Operation Polo, Operation Blue Star, Operation X, Operation Meghdood. Your time starts now. Subko like button press karte jao. Everyone please press the like button guys. Subscribe to our channel as well. So what is the right answer? Koi bata sakta hai? Kya sahi jawab hai? So what is the name of that operation? This is very very important. So after the class is over, read uh, on the Wikipedia about Khalistan movement. Because it is very much in the news. So it has some history. Go and read it. Go and read about Jarnail Singh Bindrawale. And go and read about this operation. Yes, the right answer to this question is Priya Chavan, BC Roy, Rohit, Rawl, Sani and Sari, right? Operation Blue Star is the right answer to this question. So B is the right answer. So just have an idea about it. Uh or homework hai koi bata sakta ye option 1, 3 and 4 is related with what? Is koi find out karna. Operation Polo is related with what? Which operation? Operation X and Operation Megdood. So ye wala pata hona This is Operation Blue Star. Uh, related with that. Operation Meghdoth is related with Siachin and all. Okay, so the right answer is Operation Blue Star. It was an Indian Armed Forces operation in 1984 to remove uh, Dam Dasi Taksal leader Jarnal Sin Bendawal and all. So please be aware of it. This is very very important star market. So here exactly it is. Uh, let me show you. This is Punjab. And uh, on, the, on the western Punjab, I mean somewhere here you will find the Amritsar and in Amritsar you will find this. Uh, Shri Hari Mandar Saab or uh, Golden Temple. This is uh, Golden Temple. You must have seen it. Okay, there's a homework. After the class is over, go and find out which Sikh Guru, which Sikh Guru uh, started uh, actually the construction of uh, Golden Temple and in which Sikh Gurus, uh, I mean, 
during whose uh, I mean uh, this got completed during the term of which sigro. Okay, so go and find out. Okay, I'll find out. Karna isko. Yes, operation polos related with annexation of Hyderabad. Very good. Be surai ha. Good. So this is about this. Okay. Uh, before moving on, guys, uh, there's a small announcement. We are running a CLAT 2024 comprehensive course. A new batch is also getting launched very soon. So we are left with hardly eight, nine months. You must go for this course. 300 plus recorded videos, 300 plus hours of live session, 35 plus mock tests are there. If you have query, you can call on this number 953889567 per up. Call kar sakte. Okay. So just have an idea about that. Okay. Now let's talk about editorials. Uh, these are the four editorials. Ye char hota hai. So these two are author based. These two are authorless. So just have an idea about it. Haan, started by Guru Ram Das. We write Bisu Roy. Good. Haan. So let's talk about this. Slow steps to India border, India China border. Tranquility. Tranquility means peace, Shanti. Haan. So he is talking about the India China border tranquility and all. Right. So that to ensure peace, no conflict should happen and all. Isi par based hai ye article. Okay, now, uh, so if you see it here, India and China appear to be moving towards a new modus vivendi. Now, what is modus vivendi? Modus vivendi means, uh, actually, it is uh, used in the terms of way of life or mode of living. It means, actually, let's say two parties are uh, having some issues or conflict, but still they are trying their best to solve this, their conflict and live with mutual coexistence. In dono mein kusi, kisi wajah se? मतलब कॉन्फ्लिक्ट है लेकिन चाह रहे हैं कि साथ में रहना उसको मॉडर्स फाइव एंडी आप समझ लो है एन अरेंजमेंट बिटवीन अ पार्टीज दैट अलाउस कॉन्फ्लिक्टिंग पार्टीज टू कोएग्जिस्ट इन पीस ठीक है सो दैट इज अबाउट व्हाट ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट टू मेंटेन पीस एंड ट्रैंक्विलिटी अराउंड 4000 किलोमीटर बॉर्डर सो ही इज सेइंग दैट समवेयर अराउंड 4000 किलोमीटर इज द बॉर्डर है ना uh, so in 2022, uh, in 2020, the order arrangement shared by the agreement in 1993, 96, 2005 and 2013 came apart in Ladakh after Chinese mass troops in Tibet and all. So that is what they are talking about it. Uh, I hope you are aware this question was asked in CLAT as well, in CLAT 2021, Galwan Valley clash. Yes, I hope you all are aware of that. Uh, the Galwan Valley clash happened with led uh, to the death of 20 Indian soldiers and all. Uh, so this was first such big loss in LSE after 1975 and then he is saying ki in December last year also a conflict happened in Tawang, Yangtze region Tawang in actually Arunachal Pradesh. So that is what is being talked about here. So I hope you are aware the Galwan Valley clash happened somewhere here. This is Galwan uh, Valley region. So the clashes happened in around June uh, 2020. Then in December here is Arunachal Pradesh Tawang. Tawang district of Arunachal Pradesh. In December, also the there were some issues there. And last year, November, December, main news me aara tha na. Okay, so that is what is being talked about here. Okay, yes. So uh, that is what it is. There are reports to have been uh, important uh, that took place when Shilpa Kambole, Mr. Sharpa Kambole, Joint Secretary of East India Division of Ministry of External Affairs. And Hong Kong, uh, Hong Liang, Director General of Department of Boundary and Ocean Affairs and Ministry of Foreign Affairs in China met in Beijing and all. So that is what he is saying. Ki both actually, both the officials uh, met each other uh, recently, I mean last month uh, in uh, February 2023. So we hope that yes, the border issues will be resolved and all. And, uh, uh, then he is talking about the two sides managed to disengage in Galwan, Pangong, So Gogra Post, near Jianan Pass, PP15 and all. Right, Deekho, ye question aaya tha, CLAT mein. So they asked the question about Galwan Valley clash, which is PP14. So this was asked in exam. Okay, then uh, they're saying that Galwan Valley, Pangang, So, Gogra Post and Jianan Pass, that is PP15, we are having disengagement. So yes, some region mein disengagement ho gaya, hai. So Jianan Pass is here, and Galwan Valley and all. But uh, still, uh, the, the unsettled region are Depsang. Charding, Ninglung Junction, Demchok area and all. So, niche wala jo area yaha par hoga, dekho Demchok wakar yaha pe. Still, in some areas, some uh, actually bordering areas, uh, we are having unsettled border. Hai na? So, abhi bhi puri tarah settled baat nahi hui hai. So, let's hope that things would be uh, better in the future. Thik hai? Okay, while several proposals have been discussed, the most likely one based on the experience in the last three years is about converting the other parts of LSE into similar no patrol zones and all. Yes, uh, we have discussed that this border is called as LAC. I have taught in the paid classes. Those who are my paid batch student are aware of this. This is called as line of actual control, right? 
So in some areas where there are conflicting regions, uh, we should declare it as no patrol zone. Ye patrol hai, patrol nahi. Theek hai. So patrolling means policing. Hai na? Or you can say to ensure that let's say there, uh, there is some conflict area. For example, let me explain. Let's say this area is a conflict area. Now this should be declared as NPZ, no patrol zone. It means neither Indian army should be moving here nor Chinese army. Both should withdraw it. Or we can call it as demilitarize this region. Hai na? Is hum log likhte that we should actually ensure that no military should be moving in that area. So that uh, this is called as no patrol zone to solve the actually the conflict and all. Hai na? So that is what is being talked about. Uh, then it is likely that no patrol zone could be confined to the places where the two sides have overlapping claims. Till 2020, both the sides patrol till the limit of these contingent claims and there was a protocol that if the two patrols met, they should stop and display banners to ask the other side to go back to their area. Ah, so that is what is being talked about. That no patrol zone, if someone comes in front of each other, when uh, the two uh, military come fa face to face, especially in NPZ region and all, they show the banners that yes, we should go back and all. Okay, so this is what is being talked So that is what is being talked about. Uh, I hope you are aware recently the foreign minister of China has got changed. Now we are having King Gang as the foreign minister of India, uh, foreign minister of China. And he recently met uh, Mr. S. Jay Shankar, the foreign minister of India. Hai na? On the sideline of G20 foreign ministers meeting recently, the G20 foreign ministers meeting also happened. The Chinese foreign minister, Mr. King Gang also visited India and all. Theke? So that is what is being talked about here. Theke? Uh, but just have an idea about it. He's saying that his predecessor, means King Gang's predecessor, Wang Yi, also visited New Delhi ostensibly to discuss issues relating to Ukraine. So, in the last year, the last year, March, the predecessor of the current foreign minister of China also visited India to discuss issues related with Ukraine. I hope you are aware last year, since last year, for worry, we are having a Russia Ukraine war, we are seeing and all. I hope you are aware of this. I don't need to explain much. So just have an idea about that. Now side make article is specter of stagflation. Now can anyone tell me uh, stagflation, what is the meaning of a stagflation? So it comes from the word stagnation plus inflation. I always tell you, so the word itself has a lot of meaning inside it. Okay. Stagnation plus inflation. Stagnation means stagnant growth, means GDP, if the GDP is not uh, rising, uh, or the, there is no growth, we call it as a stagnation. And inflation means mahangai. And so these are the terms we have discussed in uh, the paid sessions. And so inflation means the rise in prices of goods and services. So if the GDP is not rising and as well as the inflation is rising very fast, then that is very, I mean, it is not considered as good for the economy. And the term used is a stagflation for that. Is it clear? Huh. Nay, basically, employment, nay, stagflation, but the GDP growth is not growing. Or mahangai bari, that's called a stagflation. Okay. Yes. Uh, so the latest global financial developments and recent economic data in India are together raising fears that several major economies worldwide, including India's, may be the head for a spell of deliberating stagflation. So I hope you are aware. See, the COVID-19 happened, the lockdown happened at many places. It got uh, it disturbed the global supply chain. Then uh, Russia Ukraine war happened. And then uh, recession happened in many places because of which even maybe I means other countries have got also affected many countries economy have badly impacted and it will impact maybe in India also the stagnant growth or maybe inflation would be rising. So they are talking about it that the yeah, article I think RBI retail inflation drops to 6.44% but still above RPI, RBI's upper band. Now uh, I have discussed it. Uh, if you are my paid batch student, I have discussed this, the tolerance limit of RBI. RBI is upper tolerance limit, RBI is upper band, these language I have explained there. Now, can anyone tell me what is the uh, band or I can say upper band limit of RBI? I am waiting for the answers. I have talked about Urjit Patel committee recommendations and all. Okay, can anyone tell me? Yes, uh, the upper band is actually 6%. So still uh, the upper band has been crossed. Still it is not less than 6%, 6.44%. I have taught consumer price index and all. So that is what is being talked. Yes, we should have very good. Uh, Priya Chavan, it is 2 to 6%, not 4 to 6%. Lower limit is 2%, higher is 6%. Yes. 
So that is what is being talked about here. And I, I have explained what is in paid classes. If you are my paid batch student, I have explained what is Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and a fiscal year 22, 23. These terms I have explained. And that is what they're talking about. Now they're talking about headline inflation. I have taught this headline inflation and core inflation, right? So if you remove food and fuel, yes, it becomes core inflation. Yes, it is being mentioned here and a food and fuel. Uh, is uh, if uh, that is what they are talking about so if we remove the impact of food and fuel we are left with core inflation which is still a stuck at 6.2 percent higher than the upper limit the six percent limit hey, nah? yes okay so just have an idea about it for a third state month and all that is what is being talked about so they are saying okay, still inflation is uh, uh, more than six percent which is not very good we should actually try to reduce it and all hey, nah? So that is what is being talked about here. Anna. So RBI have raised its benchmark, benchmark interest rate by 250 basis point. Benchmark interest rate is generally referred to as repo rate. Okay, so just have an idea about it. And one basis point also I have explained one basis point is uh, one basis point is 0.01 percent. So just have an idea about that. Okay, yes. Now, the next one is if the key staple cereals and products saw inflation accelerate to 16.7% in February, the headline retail uh, for milk is at now. So, do not percentage right now because it keeps on changing every month. So, you cannot remember each and every percentage. But yes, basic idea should be there. What is consumer price index? What is inflation? What is the upper limit band, lower limit band? What is core inflation? What is headline inflation? Yes, so just have an idea about that. Okay, so that is what is being talked about. Now, the next is moving forward with a newer concept of UHC. So, universal health coverage. UHC is nothing but universal health coverage. Universal means everyone should be getting the benefit. Right? That is what is talked about here. And a world health, uh, WHO's definition of health, a certain totality of health to the realms of mental and social well-being and happiness beyond physical fitness and an absence of disease and disability. So, he's explaining what is the definition of health according to WHO. So the explaining is ki mental and social well-being hona chahiye. Then happiness hona chahiye beyond physical fitness hai na. So an absence of disease, no, uh, you should not have any disease and disability. Then you will be considered as healthy hai na. This means that we cannot achieve health in its wider definition without addressing health determinants. So yes, uh, we need, ha, so that is what he is talking about the broad definition of health. This necessitates a need for an intersectoral convergence beyond medical and health departments such as women and child development, food, nutrition, agriculture, etc. So whenever we want to give a holistic or ensure healthy people, not only health department but other departments should also be working fine. Yes, agriculture. So when we eat properly, then only we will be having a good health. So agriculture is also an important part of our health, right? Food and nutrition, it is related with agriculture, right? Animal husbandry, right? so animal husbandry is livestock farming and all, right? so cattle rearing and all, right? civil supplies, rural water and supply sanitation. So the water ensure that yes, good quality water should reach, then only people will be healthy, right? right? Tribal welfare, education, forestry, all these things should be provided. How is education linked with health? Only when you are educated, you will get to know about the information, what is healthy, what is not, which medicine to take, which medicine not to take. So even education helps helps us ensure the healthy living being, healthy life. Right? So these are the things you should be knowing it. Now, which of the following SDG talks about good health and well-being? Your options are SDG 1, SDG 3, SDG 7, SDG 9. Your time starts now. SDG means Sustainable Development Goals. Okay? Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, I hope we have discussed so many times what is SDG. So please answer me and everyone please press the like button. Subko like button press karte jao. Subscribe to the channel. Leche subscribe ko button diya hua Subko subscribe karlo and all. Yes. Sir PDF group mission. Okay. Uh, what is the right answer? The right answer actually is uh, SDG 3. So C is, B is the right answer to this question. Okay. Yes Raj Ronia you are right. B is the right answer to this question. Good health and well-being is SDG 3. Yes. Amulya Raj, Viso Roy, you are right. B is the right answer. SDG 3, Sustainable Development Goal 3 talks about good health and well-being. Okay. Uh, the next one is we all just subscribe to the goal of health for all by 2000. Yes. In 1977, in World Health Assembly, uh, this was said uh, by a person, Havdan Mahler, that by 2000, we will be having health for all. 
uh, then uh, then they're talking about the concept of universal health coverage universal health coverage means everyone should be getting all the health benefits or ensure that everyone should be healthy or getting the medicine and all required in fact national health policy 1983 way back i mean 30 40 years back also talked about health for all goal by 2000 and all right so just have an idea about that okay uh, then they are talking about a very important this is very very important alma ata conference so alma ata conference 1978 is also related with health so that is what you must be knowing it okay so realizing that even the poor do con contract chronic illness and non colorable disease such as cardiac neural mental and metabolic disorders and all and to isi ki baat kare itna detail nahi jana hai no need to go much in detail okay uh, every individual has right to be healed and not have complicated disability yes right to be healed but the ilaj karna hai na everyone should get the medicine and all hai na so alma alta declaration kafi detail mein baat kiya ja raha they are talking about this declaration hai na so just have an idea to us sustainable and universal health hai na so just have an idea about that theek hai isko padh lena alma ata declaration just go and read about alma ata declaration uske baad ek astana declaration bhi aaya tha but read this one after the class is over try to read alma ata declaration what is that it is related with actually improving public health and all theek hai so that is what is being talked about here then some of the government schemes related with improving health poshan abhiyan and a portion itself means nutrition to provide nutrition to children and to women and all na mid day meal scheme thi hai na national food security to provide foods mg narega is there then surf shiksha abhiyan to provide education is there now it is called as samagra shiksha abhiyan samagra shiksha abhiyan theek hai uh then universal health coverage ayushman bharat jan arogya yojana this i have taught these in paid classes i still remember uh ayushman bharat scheme to provide health insurance to the poor hai na these are the things we have discussed it in the paid sessions so health insurance and all so go and read about it ayushman bharat uh, then sarv shiksha abhiyan mahatma mg narega poshan abhiyan these are the important ones you must be knowing it okay uh the next one is uh, uh, side make article the playing with the fire now uh this we have already discussed it in the yesterday's uh, i mean not yesterday on 16th march the hindu analysis on thursday last thursday we have discussed about this in editorial section so what happened was actually the fire came uh, uh, the brahmapuram is a place in kerala where actually near kochi where uh, the landfill uh, in landfill the fire happened and uh, this caused a lot of pollution and all and uh, that is what the question of effective solid waste management was being raised so that is what is being talked about here so maine already discuss kara hai please go and watch this one where i have discussed in detail about that theek hai yes uh, then that is what is being talked about ki uh, what are the failures issues and all two kinds of failure kochi solid waste management apparatus is 2 10 years that 10 years means not very effective keh sakte ho theek hai so the solid waste management in this kochi region is not very effective hai na for the amount of waste it produces so it produces a lot of waste causes a lot of landfill landfill mein jab kooda jama hota hai right so i mean uh, but it is not able to handle it properly waste to energy plant is also dysfunctional waste to energy plant means if the waste in that waste can be converted into definite energy hai na so that is also not very effective so that is what is being talked about here theek hai it is of concern that state overlook supreme court and ngt's order to prevent such fire so there are a lot of judgment of supreme court and national green tribunals judgment related with protecting the fires the uh, the forest fires or like in say landfill fires and all and corruption in the face of climate crisis beggars uh, cynicism and all so that is what is being talked about to hum log isko discuss kar chuke hain is article mein go and read this one the 16th march the hindu analysis where i have discussed it in detail theek hai now uh, the next one is uh, Uh, india's democratic values have eroded significantly since vdem report so this is a report by vdem uh, vdem is an institute uh, i mean varieties of democracy institute it's uh, uh, based on sweden's university of gothenburg so this is a report uh, the name of the report is defines in the face of autocratization ye wala report hai democracy report 2023 by vdem and this is based in uh, switzerland uh, sorry sweden based in sweden released by this university university of gothenburg just have an idea about it sadhani jana hai 
Now, uh, though they produce, uh, they according to them produce largest global data set on demography with 31 million data points, etc. from 1789 to 2022 and all. That is what they have written. So they are saying ki 72% uh, of the people's world's population are living in autocracy. So we are having 8 billion population in the world and out of that 5.7 billion are actually living in under autocracy. Autocracy means you can say opposite of dictatorship, opposite of democracy, sorry, opposite of democracy, you can say. So that is what they are saying and all. And uh, according to them in 2012, uh, in seven countries, there were uh, freedom of expression were deteriorating, deteriorating with the harab hona, poor, becoming poor day by day. In 2022, it has become 35 countries. It means they are saying at the world level, the democracy is actually on the decline. That is what VDEM report, according to the VDEM report. This is not my report. This is the report of VDEM. Varieties of democracy. This is what it says. Then they are saying, yes, democratization got gap 43 to 14 ho gaya, if you see from 2002 to 2022. Number of countries autocratizing is rising. Autocratizing means uh, they are going against democracy. So they are rising. So it means they are saying ki that democracy is on the decline. So they have uh, written it and all. Okay, so, isko padle na? so they have written it. Freedom of expression is det uh, determining and all. So they have said, in fact, they have categorized India also uh, according to them in electoral autocracy. Electoral means election happen, but still full democracy is not there according to VDEM. It is not my data. According to VDEM, they have said like this. So this was an article. So I've discussed, discussed it. Now, uh, the question is, what is India's rank on democracy index according to the VDEM report released recently? Your options are 101, 194, 108, 135. Your time starts now. Uh, I think a few days back it was in the news in the first week of March India's democracy India's rank on democracy index released by VDEM report so India's rank is now 108 so you see is the right answer you can see this VDEM denigrates India's rank once again ranks it 108 on democracy index so just have an idea about it according to this so earlier it was 100 position now 108 so just have an idea about it so C is the right answer now, but, uh, rank yaad rakhna maybe yes there are a lot of criticism that is a different thing but maybe in exam they can ask rank so just have an idea c is the right answer okay yes uh, priya chavan bisuroy you all are right so this is the uh, graph put by the hindu uh, uh, newspaper so the blue dots are showing increase in democratic values so in south korea in seychelles in gambia we have seen the increase in democratic values and the red dots where actually values are eroded so afghanistan hong kong india tunisia poland brazil this is what they have written According to VDEM report, I am saying. So, this is according to them. Yes, the right answer is 108. C is the right answer. Amulia, Pratik, Zoya Khan, you all are right. Huh? Now, on page number 10, there was an article talking about security cover to Patel, not intelligence failure, says Jammu Kashmir police. Now, this was a very interesting thing. I hope you must have seen this in news. So, Gujarat con man with fake PMO card baffles Jammu Kashmir cops. So, uh, Basically, there was a guy, his name is Kiran Patel. So, he declared himself that he is an officer of PMO, Prime Minister's office. And he got all the Z plus securities and all. I hope you are aware. He got Z plus security. So, Z plus security is a very top class thing. Five star hotel. And he posed himself as a Prime Minister's office official. So, he said he is an official of Prime Minister's office. And he was later on held arrested and all. Uh, because that was a fake claim. He was picked up from Hotel Lalit Grand Place, a five-star property in Srinagar on March 2, following a tip-off from informer and all. So that is what is being talked about here. So I hope you will know this is a related article. Thi. So go and read about Kiran Patel. He is from Gujarat actually. So these are the photos also which emerged. Uh, who is the Prime Minister of Japan? Who is on a visit to India? Your options are Fumio Kishida, Yoshihide Suga, Shinzo Abe. Yoshiro Mori, your, your time starts now. Uh, Prime Minister of Japan, Abhi, aaj, uh, visit par hai India ke. he actually today visited India. Uh, so what is his name? You are supposed to tell me. Waiting for the response. Sab koi like button press karte ja. Everyone, please press the like button, share this video, subscribe to our channel. What is the right answer? Dekho, the current Prime Minister is Fumio Kishida and he is on a visit to India. And yes, uh, Susmita, Mati, Bisu, Roy, Tosi, Praza, Rajnandani, you all were right. Ha, Zoya Khan, correct. And Shinzo Abe was the Prime Minister who was assassinated last year, I think around June. Last year. Yes, ha, his answer A hai. And he was assassinated last year in June. Uh, so Shinzo Abe was also very famous. And uh, 
uh, that is why you must be knowing go and read about him also Shinzo Abe because that can be us also so Fumio Kishida uh, he is uh, to visit India today G7 G20 Indo Pacific ties on agenda see why Japan is very important because it is a part of quad as well right? So, Quad may India, Japan, Australia, and US is there. I have told you, Anna. Okay, so both India and Japan are a part of Quad or Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, Anna. And in fact, G7 may Japan, hai, India is not there. But yes, G20 may both Japan and India is there. So, just have an idea about that, Anna. So, he is actually on a visit to India. So, go and read about him, uh, that whatever he will be discussing and all. Achha, ek do cheez aap After the class is over, read about uh, Shinzo Abe in detail. So, which political party he belonged to? He was assassinated last year. And go and read something about it. He, what was his, uh, he was actually, he was the person who gave the idea of Quad, Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, I think in 2007 and all. Okay. Okay, so just have an idea about it. Hai na? So, iska A is the right answer to this question. Sir, questions are there? Okay, I'll try. Okay, Zoya Khan. Okay. Uh, the next one is world page number page number 13 make article three Putin visits Mariupol uh, in first trip to occupy the territory and a core Pakistan police registers terror charges against Imran Khan and PTI leaders uh, this we have discussed it that Pakistan's police is uh, and the army is trying its best to arrest Imran Khan the ex prime minister of Pakistan on charges and on different charges so that is what it was in the news uh, can anyone tell me what is the political party name of Imran Khan Political party name. I am waiting for the answers. I am not giving option. I am waiting for the answers. Can anyone tell me what is the name of political party of Imran Khan? So, here it is written. I mean, this is a very easy actually question. Because here the answer is PTI. Right? So, the name of his political party is PTI. And please go and find out after the class is over. That what is the full form of PTI, the uh, political party of Imran Khan. Okay? And write it in the niche comment. Okay? After the class is over, write it in the comment, static comment. The PTI full form kya hai? And this is a political party of Imran Khan. He is a former cricketer as well and all. Just have an idea about it. Uh, the next is Putin visits Mariupol in first trip to occupy territory. Yes, Pakistan, Tehreek and Saf. Very good, Biso Roy. Good. Huh. Uh, so, this, uh, now let's talk about this. Mariupol. Uh, Mariupol is a port city. Uh, iska spelling thoda sa change kar rete. Mariupol is writing written like this. Hana? Is a port city in Black Sea, Azov Sea, Atlantic Ocean, Caspian Sea. Your time starts now. Yes, PTI is Pakistan, Tehreek, Insaf. Yes, Biso Roy, Zoya Khan, you all were right. Huh? So, uh, Mariupol is a port city uh, which actually uh, recently the Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, visited. So, where do you find it? Black Sea may, Azov Sea may, Atlantic Ocean, Caspian Sea. Where do you find this? Uh, this is also very important. I would suggest that you star mark. Laga lena. Because whenever Russia-Ukraine war is, was happening, this was a very important city. Since it is a port city, that is why always port cities are generally considered as very important. Hai na? Port city ko hamesha bahut eh eh diya jata. Yes, very good. Be so right. Good. So, it is actually in Azov Sea. Uh, B is the right answer. Zoya Khan, Priya Chavan, you all are right. So it is an Azopsy. Let me show. Amulya Raj, Rajnandani, uh, you all are right. Huh? Not Black Sea. Dekho, main batata here exactly it is Ukraine. This is Russia. So Russia you, uh, invaded Ukraine. And if you see it here, okay, this is Black Sea. This is Black Sea. And this one, you all are right. This one is Azopsy. Azopsy. And you all are This is actually Mariupol. So, this was actually earlier a part of uh, 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 actually Ukraine, but uh, I hope you are you can see the border. So, this is the Ukraine portion, but this region actually has been captured by Russia. I hope you all are aware of this. Eastern region, this is here is Russia, and this is the ideal border of Russia and Ukraine, and this is actually Mariupol. Mariupol, and as of sea, as of sea. Now, ideally, this should be the part of Ukraine, but actually. It has been captured. So, this region, let me make it. I mean, making a rough sketch. So, somewhere here, this region has been actually captured by Russia after Russia Ukraine war. So, that is why now it is a part of, uh, I mean, uh, it is now under the control of Russia, and that is why Vladimir Putin recently visited. Right? Which is Mariup uh, uh, Mariupol in first trip to occupied territory. So, if you see the language, 
occupied territory means uh, it was earlier a part of Ukraine. Now they have captured it. So here Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, visited here. Uh, you can see it here as well. They have BBC ki photo hai. Uh, they have made it. Thoda sa maine thik nahi banaya tha. Yaha tak ye wala. Thik hai. So this is the Russian portion tha na. Ab dekho ye wala region. This region. So this region is actually. Ye wala jo Crimea tha. This was actually captured in 2014. Way back. Hai na. Bad both pehle. Crimea we call it as. And this region. Ye wala jo region hai. Uh, this region. Is actually right now red color the Russian military control. Okay. So this region is under military control of Russia, and here Mariupol Milega, which is now under the control of Russia. And port cities are very important, very important because all the trades happen with the help of that ports. Recently, port city ko capture karna kimti These are considered as very, very important actually. Okay. So this is all about today's class. Please subscribe to our channel. Niche subscribe ko button diya. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Telegram and download the Baiju's exam prep app. Thank you everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.